Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Maisie and we're gonna, we're gonna do a great pick a card reading today on what the biggest secret is that's being hidden from you right now. But first, we're gonna take a quick look at our sponsor today, Keen. Keen is, a, is an amazing psychic network filled with astrologers, tarot readers, mediums, whatever you need, whatever kind of reading you wanna get, Keen has it. So they are amazing, you guys. They, they have worked with so many people, they have a great reputation, and I have worked directly with them myself. So I, I think they're a reputable place to go if you want a reading, and I have worked with them to give you a great discount for your first reading. You can get 10 minutes for $1.99. So click the link below for 10 minutes for $1.99 only and try them out. Back to the reading. As usual, I have three cards with three crystals on, in front of me. Please take as long as you need. Don't overthink it. Just pick the one that screams your name. There are timestamps below and I will see you at your reading. Hey group one, welcome to your reading. This is for the first stone. I actually don't know what this is. So if any of you have an idea, let me know. <laughs> but I think it's really cool looking. It's got multiple different colors, maybe many layers as to what someone is keeping from you. So I'm gonna call onto this energy card to kind of give us an idea of what's happening. We have the fool here. So maybe someone is, um, maybe someone is, starting a new beginning or wants to start a new beginning, maybe with you, maybe regarding a career or something like that and they're not being super truthful. But the idea here is that there's a lot of um, potential, but is that potential being utilized? Is that what they're um, keeping from you? Let's find out. So the way that we do this is I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna shuffle some cards and then we'll just see what comes out. All right, what is being kept from group one? Okay, we're gonna read them in the order that they fall. So we'll see. What is being kept from group one? What big secret is not being revealed. Whoops, that was supposed to be upside down. You got a sneak peek. Um, let's just start with that and see where we get. We have the three of pentacles reversed, the four of wands, justice reversed, the star, Uh, the Seven of Swords reversed and the Hermit reversed. So I'm going to put this over here. Let's see what we have. So what is being kept from you, group number one? Okay, so we have three people here. So that's obviously indicative of some, I mean, it's not obvious, but it can be indicative of some triad going on where it's like, someone is overstepping, someone isn't being exactly truthful, there could be three people involved, a baby, another person in the relationship, um, someone at work trying to take on, take on your role. Uh, so it can mean that someone's overstepping and tearing down the bond that is already current. So if you are in a family of three, this is really important. For example, if you have like if you live with your spouse and your dog, or if you live with your spouse and your kid, um, this can indicate that they, the stability is waning and that something is, is detrimental to it. Uh, something's creeping in. So I think whatever the secret is, uh, has potential to bring down stability. This is a teamwork card. So it can mean that like, like you know, we, we, we come together to use all of our skills um, to build something greater. And so when it's reversed like this, it can mean that uh, someone isn't bringing what they are supposed to to the table and it's detrimental to the overall group environment. So um, to me, it just seems like someone wants to be 
you know, showing you that they've changed, that they've turned a new leaf, but um, their actions aren't following through and it's going to be detrimental down the line. The Four of Wands talks about dreams. Um, and it could be that someone has a dream and they really, really want it, but they're not able to um, fully realize it yet. And so, but they're kind of putting that off. It almost makes me feel like they want a job or they want a, a marriage with you or they want um, the ultimate success. Sorry, that's my dog shaking. She's being rambunctious. Um, but they can't uh, exactly follow through with it because they need someone else's opinion. I'm sorry. Um, so justice reversed can indicate that someone is not ethically sound in this, in this situation. Another thing that justice represents is legality. So I just feel like there's a lot of, there's a lot of tension between what I want and what is actually reality. And I don't know if this person is hiding some sort of uh, lawsuit or some, some like um, technical bind or legal bind to another family. You know what I mean? Like they, it seems like they want this to work out, whether it's with you or whether it's this career or this like life that they envision, but they're stuck between a rock and hard place because they don't want to be lying to you or morally unethic, unethical, um, but they are tied somewhere else. So this seems to be very specific, <laughs> a very specific message for people. And I think that we just have to kind of work with it a little bit more and see what else we get. We have the star next, which is like dreams. This is also dreaming about non-realities, like going above and beyond to really, um, to get what we believe we should have. But I just think that this person is doing it in the wrong way. Um, and I also feel like this secret whatever it is, is going to be revealed soon. That's the seven of swords. And in a, in a reverse position, it means that someone is um, opening up or someone's, I don't know, going, revealing what they don't want. They know they've been keeping. Uh, the hermit also talks about coming out of the shadows. This is about um, owning uh, responsibility. So I do think that this person is turning around. It will share some of this with you, but it seems to have been going on a long time. So I think that it's going to be a little bit difficult to take in once at first. There just seems to be a lot of, I just feel like a legal bind or like I am responsible for this family. I'm responsible for this person. I'm, maybe I'm responsible for my, my sister in jail, you know, things like that, where you feel responsible, but it's infringing upon what you want in your life. And it's causing um, material turmoil and stability turmoil. So let's, uh, let's dive a little deeper into this because I would love to know just a little bit more. So for example, like what is the four of wands? Like what does this person want? Like, first of all, What do they want? Okay, that one. see these are, there's too many that fell out, so we can't use this. <laughs> what does this person want? By the way, this is my, this is the Tempest Tarot deck. Um, it's my deck and if you enjoy it, there's a caption below to buy. Obviously only, only if you love it. <laughs> what does this person want? I think that we got the page of pentacles, which can mean like material. I just feel there's a lot of money here. I just feel like there's some issues with money that there's um, lying about how much money someone has and what they're gonna do with it. So it's like, oh yeah, I've started this company and we have a lot of investors when really you don't when really you're just like, you're in the clouds, you're unsure, you're not even like, you're not making this happen. So 
I just feel like someone is trying to be something that they're not right now, like faking it till they make it a little bit. Um, I would like to know what the Three of Pentacles means, so we're going to pull a clarifying card for that. Okay, King of Cups. See, it's all about our emotions, all about owning our emotions, but not necessarily owning responsibility. It's like, I feel it, like I dream it, I want it. But that doesn't mean that you can actually get it. <laughs> like, there's no steps there. That's just belief and feeling. Um, the Hangman also came up right next to it, which discusses um, total, sometimes illusions and being delusional about what is really possible. And I, I, the two more, two more cards actually came up and they resonate too, so I'm just going to pull them too. The Knight of Wands and the Six of Wands. Six of Wands is success. That's basically kind of, it's similar to the Four of Wands, um, reaching our major dreams. And then the Knight of Wands makes me feel like this person is like a child. Like they're naive to the fact that this isn't working out for them. So a lot of information there. I like, I think we're getting kind of to the root of it. Um, but we can pull one, let's pull one more card for the Seven of Swords to see like what, what, like what's the secret, you know, what is the secret? Well, we have Queen of Cups, secret could be that they're getting funding from someone that they know, their mother, their ex-wife, you know, um, like secret about where the funds are coming from. Secret is that they're in debt, that they need to recover from debt. This is the Five of Pentacles and it is just, it talks about debt. I, I um, have this really big feeling that someone's in trouble. <laughs> someone's in money trouble and they're trying to pretend that they're not. Let's, let. I feel like we got to the base of it. Let's just move on to, um, Let's move on to the oracle cards. I'm gonna just like place these all together here. Oh wait, we didn't do that. I feel like it's funny that the Knight of Wands came up next to the star because that they're the same. They just are major dreamers. Okay, so where should we start? I feel like I feel like we should start over here. So I have these astrological cards and we'll just kind of see what energies are at play. Aries and Psyche. Very interesting. Oh my God, you, you'll never believe it. Okay, so, um, I mean, it's just all about money, my goodness. So, Eris and Psyche, we're talking about our intellectual, or not intellectual, our psychological um, mishaps or like misconnections. Um, this is, we're getting into a dark side here with these two asteroids. The second house is the money house. It literally is about finances. So, I feel like someone is delusional about their finances. It just, ha it, this only clarifies like what, what this is about. Um, maybe we, I think since we got to this pretty quickly, I'm, I guess I'm just, I think we're going to move on to the, the die on like what, um, what should you do? You know, what's next? So I have these die. We're going to see what you should do next basically. Okay, we have Venus in Libra in the fifth house. So the fifth house is all about fun. It's dating, it's exciting, it's flirting, it's like spending, it's flirting. So it is fun. Venus is also fun, but in Libra, I think we're talking about a different kind of vibe here. We're talking about let's look at this from the perspective of everybody. Let's look at this. Um, in the way that you see it, but also let's try to show how it's affecting me. Since Venus and Libra in the fifth house is happening here, it makes me feel like we're not being totally honest about how this has been um, transpiring and how this has been affecting you. So I think you just need to be upfront about this. Like 
if you've been wondering, you know, whether this is happening behind your back or whatever, this is about to come out. And I think if you even push a little bit, knowing what we know here, um, not even push, I mean, don't push them, but you know what I mean? Like, uh, open a bridge for them to tell you, give them the opportunity to tell you. And I think they will. So once you have that out in the clear, we can be very Libra forward and, you know, try to find peace and harmony with t together, you know, like accepting our losses and really coming together to decide what's going to happen next for the benefit of all. Okay. I'm going to spread these out for you one last time. That's it for you guys. Thank you so much for coming and I hope to read for you guys again soon. Hey, group two, this is for everyone who chose the clear quartz. Um, really simple, but holds a lot of meaning. So we'll see how that goes in this reading. Um, for our energy card, we have the King of Cups in a reverse position. So very interesting start. We're already pointing to someone. Cups are about our emotions, and the King of Cups is really good at um, getting to those emotions. I mean, they're the king of it, right? So. This person may be either sharing that they care about you when really their their focus is somewhere else, or they're not they don't care as much as they say they do, or um, they're emotionally manipulating you to make you, you know, look the other way from whatever they're doing. I mean, more more to come on this. Like this is just an opening, but it does say that someone could be. be could be dece deceitful and is um, keeping something from you uh, regarding and using your emotions as a way to keep them safe. So we're the way this works is we're going to pull cards now. See how it goes. So what? Um, group two. What is the biggest? Thing being kept from you right now the biggest secret okay we're gonna read them in the order that they fall so oh, okay <laughs> biggest secret I'm gonna pull a couple more We have the Ten of Swords reversed, the Star reversed, the Devil, Ooh, you guys, the Hermit, the Two of Cups. Oh, I'm sorry. I think that was the last one. It was supposed to be the Strength reversed first, then the Four of Wands reversed, and then the Two of Cups. Okay, well, I'm already thinking that something that you're wondering about is true. The Ten of Swords is that time, like in an upright position, it's like, why am I doing this to myself? I'm like blaming myself, going back on what I did, wondering how I fucked up, basically. And it's reversed here, which makes me feel like, honestly, someone is manipulating your emotions to make you believe it's you. So really, that's gaslighting. So someone might be gaslighting you right now. Uh, and if you feel like you're constantly um, wondering what you did wrong, constantly blaming yourself, that is an effect of this person, and it's not an effect of you, if that makes sense. The star reverse is a very interesting card because this shows like, this relationship is not what it seems. This relationship, this is obviously about a love partnership um, or maybe best friendship if, if that doesn't apply to you. But the star reverse is very much about like dreams and uh, believing that we have it all, believing that we have the best thing for us. Um, and in a reverse position, it can mean a big reality check. So I think that right now you think that everything is great with this person, 
Um, but this person's gaslighting you to make you believe that things are your fault. To it's, it's to make you believe that you're lesser than. And this card is telling us that the relationship is not in a healthy place. And this card also tells us that a relationship is not in a healthy place. I mean, this gaslighting is leading to toxicity. This gaslighting is leading to a toxic relationship. You guys are not healthy. You know. Um, the hermit, I think, is more advice. I think it's like, hey, take a step back. Be on your own for a while. Take a trip. Um, visit your grandmother. I don't know. You know, do something where you can get away from this person so you can consider all the things that are happening. Strength reverse. That's where I said lack of um, making you feel lesser than. This is a card of self-worth. And when it's upside down, it means that we are lacking in self-worth. So really this person is taking away your own personal strength, taking away your own personal confidence. The four of wands reversed is, again, very similar to the star reversed. It's, it's like aligning perfectly. Um, right here it's aligning, right here it's aligning, and right here it's aligning. Actually, that's really weird. It is aligning very much the same because we have, you know, going back on ourselves again and again and again, just tearing ourselves down. That's exactly what lack of self-worth is. The star is about reality checks and, that, and like not finding success in our dreams. That's exactly what this is saying. And the devil, if you look at the devil and the two of cups together, we have a man and a woman on each side, a man and a woman on each side. The woman's on the left and the man's on the right. And they're both exchanging something. In this case, they're um, exchanging. He's, you can see that he's like putting his hand out to like, you know, bring her in. In this card, he's also putting his hand out to bring her in. But you can see that they're connected. They're intrinsically connected. In this card, it's obviously a good card. It's a intrinsically connected through the cups or through emotions. This card is intrinsically connected through the chains. So I can't let you go. Um, you can't go. You can't leave. You know, we're setting up some really um, disastrous and hazardous boundaries with this person. And they're placing a lot of boundaries on you that, and you're letting them. Um, I just think that this is really interesting, the parallels that we're seeing here. And it's kind of just, it just reaffirms that we're on the right path here. But um, yeah, I feel like we need to pull one more card for the Hermit to see, to see like what the parallel is there. or two. So we have a, the King of Cups again. Here we go. And the Page of Pentacles. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is the literal relationship right here. Page is feminine energy. King is masculine energy. King is mature and overbearing and tyrannical at times, especially in this time. Page is naive and sensitive and willing to please. In this case, this Page of Pentacles um, is very willing to play. It's very much like, I will do anything you say, I will work on things, I will better myself. This person can better themselves into believing that they have are just the worst person of all time. <laughs> and I think a lot of that is due to this manipulative person right here. So this is basically the parallel I think here is that maybe it isn't that you need separation, maybe it's more that there is no connection. Like you feel lost, you feel abandoned, you feel lonely, you feel like you're a hermit in your own partnership. Yeah. Okay, let's pull some like um, oracle cards to see what we get. Um, oh, I have a good one. Let's do these. These um, these are basically like messages from loved ones. And I totally believe that you can be in a toxic relationship and both partners can love the other. So we're just going to see what happens. Let's pull a card for you. Like, what do you, what do you feel in this relationship? Like, what do you think? Um, what do you, 
What would you tell this person? Oh my gosh, there's too many, you guys. They just flew everywhere. I would say that this is the one, since it came up upright, I am true to you. So that makes me feel that they're totally indebted to you. Um, I'm not gonna go and get the other two on the ground because that's just too far and obviously it wasn't meant to be. <laughs> the, the other person, let's see what they have to say. Okay, we have wait for me, I need more time. And I am listening to my head, not my heart. So you're here saying, I am all about you. I am all about this. Um, I think that if we're talking about the big secret, I don't think anything is like, to be clear, I don't think that this person is necessarily strayed. It could be that, you know, it could be that they have another thing going on with this Two of Cups, but I didn't immediately get that. So um, it's possible, but I'm not sure about that. I think it's more like the secret is that you're unaware of how unhealthy the relationship is. Um, so this is kind of just setting up what the, the dynamic of the relationship. You're like here, true, like love you forever. And this person, it's like, I'm, I keep being an asshole just keep waiting for me. I keep being an asshole, just like, just watch, I'll get better. And um, I, then this person also has issues listening to their head, not their heart. They can't seem to just get into their heart and stay there enough to be with you. I just don't think they're strong enough to be with you. We can also ask, to, like see what kind of influences we have here like astrological influences. I'm shuffling the astrological deck that I have. Let me see. Oh my gosh, you guys. Well, first of all, we have lunar eclipse, um, with, which literally just happened. Um, this can be, a, this is a totally timeless video, but if you are watching at the time that I posted, the lunar eclipse, uh, in Taurus just happened this week. So this can mean, this can, this kind of revelation, the secret that's being revealed about your relationship could be happening because of the lunar eclipse. Like you may have already thought about a lot of this stuff. You may have already thought like, you know what? It's not as good as I thought it was. You know what? Uh, this person is not good for me. Those kinds of thoughts. Um, we have Pisces here too, which is about getting into our feelings, but I think also a lot of the time Pisces can get wrapped up and um, uncertain. It can make things a little hazy like Neptune, its ruler. So I think part of this lunar eclipse is to break through that Pisces, you know, dreamer, dreamy kind of energy. I think that, so I'm going to pull... I'm gonna pull like a self-help card. I feel like, so these are great. These are, um, it's called the embodiment deck and it's it, it has affirmations, journal prompts, and actions that we can do. Uh, and I use it for my therapy subscription, um, which is basically like, we work on growth goals. Every, and every single month we do a personalized spread for you and, and astrological transits that are actual actually like pinpointing your growth goals so that we're able to um, so that we're able to, you know, help you grow. And these, these cards are a part of it and I love them so much. So I think because this person has done a lot of damage here, by the way, I just, <laughs> I forgot to mention that I will be putting a link down below for the, for the therapy uh, subscription in case you're interested. Um, the strength card says that self-worth is um, reversed here. You know, self-worth isn't happening and I think this person has done a lot of damage here to you regarding your not integrity regarding your ego <laughs> and this these cards are gonna help pinpoint something that would like you know get get your pride back in check you know healthy amount of pride is always good we want to feel confident in ourselves 
Okay, so we have beautiful. I love this. I think that this person isn't making you feel beautiful. <laughs> they aren't making you feel like the radiant beauty that you are. So obviously you can see that there are a lot of words here. This symbol means that it's an affirmation. So I'm going to read you this affirmation that you should be, you know, working with. I delight in every part of me, knowing I have been beautifully designed. My body as, is a sanctuary, a sacred place where the divine dwells. I see the beauty of love displayed in the way I laugh at silly jokes. I cry for the heart, the heart broken, and I celebrate a friend's win. As I gaze into the mirror, I am aware of my true essence, and I'm reminded of the beautiful gift that I am. I love it. It's so cute. Okay, and the other one was a journal prompt. Let's see, we have that here. Rhythm, and it gives you three questions to think about and journal about to release this kind of energy. How would creating a daily rhythm offer me a sense of freedom? I love that freedom because it doesn't make, this relationship doesn't make me feel like you have freedom. You have nothing of your own anymore because you're living in this person's cycle, this, their orbit, you know? Can I recall a time where I've seen rhythm help, where I've seen rhythm help something flourish? Where in my life is there a need for nourishing rhythms? Just as, the, as life has seasons, I embrace the rhythms that I am in, currently in need of. Love it. To close this off, I think I'm going to just pull some, or roll the astrological die. This is like advice on what to do next. Like how do we, besides these actionable things, like what's the next step, you know, for this? Venus, so we got love in Virgo in the eighth house. The eighth house is no bullshit, guys. This is like, uh, it's this toxicity right here. This is about toxicity. Um, Virgo is how much am I giving, right? And Venus is uh, regarding love. So how much my of my love am I getting, giving? It's time to like take back your um, service, you know, Virgo is service. I feel like you're very indebted to this person. I am true to you. And I think that it's time to think about that in terms of karmic, uh, karmic debt. You know, how much debt are you putting yourself in by like giving so much to this person? And how much debt are they putting you in by just being around you, you know? So let's think on that group too. <laughs> Okay, thank you guys. Thank you so much for being here. I cannot wait to read for you again soon. Hey, group three, welcome to your reading. Uh, for everybody who chose the Rose Quartz Moon, super cute. This is gonna be your energy card for the reading, just basically like what it encapsulates. Uh, we have the Eight of Wands here, which is a card of inspiration and ideas. So it could be that someone is keeping certain ideas from you, but we're just gonna keep this in mind as we read. Um, ideas and inspiration and motivation. That's kind of our theme right here. And I wonder what that means. In order to do this, we're going to pull some cards. Let's see what group three, like what secret is being kept from group three? Yeah, that one's in there too. We're just going to keep the top two there. Oh, I think I might, now, now that I'm looking at these, I might understand what the secret is. What secret is being kept from, from group three? Okay. Let's, um... Let's start with that and see how that works. I think those are that's good. We have the eight or sorry, the nine of swords here. That's the one we saw. We have the knight of wands reversed. We have the two of cups, the ace of pentacles, and the six, sorry, <laughs> the six of swords. Um Okay, so the Nine of Swords is a card of defeat. It's a, it's a card of anxiety. So you have been worrying endlessly about something. I already know that you are picking up on this. Um, 
your the eight of wands I think has to refer to like dreams thoughts and um, fantasies almost like you're worried that this person is thinking about someone else that's kind of what I'm getting here uh, whoever you're dating right now like you're worried that they are that they keep lying to you about this maybe it's a best friend maybe it's an ex um, like a best friend you know but the idea is I think this person is like don't worry about it like it's not a big deal I'm just hanging out with them alone you know or it's not a big deal we've been friends for ages it's not a big deal we're friends now we used to date but it's okay um, it's making you uneasy. It's keeping you up at night. And this person is carelessly and selfishly um, abandoning you in this uh, defeatist kind of area. Uh, and the Knight, of, the Knight of Wands in general can be very uh, self-involved, especially when reversed. So I feel like there's some persuasion going on around what you're thinking like you're crazy maybe some of those words are coming out like you're crazy for thinking that I can't believe you um obviously my attention is not there but hey look this person is looking over here to this other like dream relationship that's where I think this is coming in it's like not it's in your head it's not actually acted on necessarily but you may be thinking it you may be having fantasies about it maybe it's Maybe it's not even an actual other person. Maybe it's like porn or something, you know, where they're actively, their attention is actively this way and not towards you. And I think you're feeling a lot, uh, very left out and wondering what it is. And it's because the attention is not on you. The attention is on some like fantasy relationship that isn't happening. Um, but it's, it's coming like dangerously close to impeding on the relationship. It's crossing boundaries for sure, but not necessarily like legal relationship boundaries. The Ace of Pentacles makes me feel like whatever this relationship was, this person, um, or this, sorry, this person and them almost made it happen. Like they almost started a relationship, but they couldn't for some reason that um, it just didn't work out. You know, they like, they, um, if it's porn, I didn't have enough money. <laughs> Or like they left town, they moved away before we'd start anything. We never met, you know, we met online and we never really met in person, that kind of thing. And so they're just visualizing like them and like wondering what could have been. And that's putting you in such a weird place. I feel so sorry that you're dealing with that right now. The, set, the six of swords in an upright position means I understand what happened. I understand why why things had to be the way they are and I know why I had to leave. In a reverse position, it means they're having a hard time letting go. So this person is 100% having a hard time letting go of this fantasy relationship going on. Uh, it's, it's become extremely difficult for them. Uh, and I think, to be honest, it doesn't really seem like they even care that you feel the way that you do. It seems like they're so focused on themselves that it's, they're having a difficult time like t accounting for someone else's feelings. So it, that also may be making you feel kind of shitty, as it should. That's, no one wants to feel second, you know? I'm going to pull a couple cards on this, like just some clarifying cards with the Tempest Tarot deck. If you like it, you know where to look. Oops. <laughs> You know where to look, it's in the captions. We're gonna pull a clarifying card on the Two of Cups. Like, is this relationship real? Like, what is this relationship? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, well we got the devil, obviously. This is reverse, so it's like, toxic it's taking over it's not a you're the devil card is in a reverse position it can mean like that we're healing but I don't think they're healing I think they're stuck in it they're stuck in this like weird cycle I can't let go kind of thing and they don't know why the eight of swords in a reverse position also says that these are negative toxic cards this is also a negative toxic card but I think both of you are having like these uh 
inner issues separate from one another. And they obviously, if it's a secret, they haven't told you any of this. Um, so let's maybe let's figure out what happened here. Like, what is the Ace of Pentacles? Like, why? Why couldn't they be together? Like, let's get a clarifying card on the Ace of Pentacles. they messed up <laughs> I think they did something wrong they seem that this is the dynamic we got the queen of a queen of pentacles this is like the woman everyone wants you know the beautiful like stable just gorgeous inside and out kind of woman and the knight of swords is someone who totally self-sabotages especially when reversed so I think that he kind of messed up whatever relationship is going on um, or relationship was forming or something and now they regret it. Now they're upset. Now they're fantasizing about what could have been, why didn't I go for it when I had the chance and um, they're just kind of full of regret. So that's no fun, of course. Um, I think let's turn the focus on you now. We'll have some, we'll do a, an oracle card pick. Kind of bring these all over here. Okay. Before, yeah, we're gonna start with these cards. These are like soul, like um, soulmate oracle cards. They they have uh, messages. So I think like if this person could talk to you, they would say this: "You are my soulmate." Maybe they are saying that. If this person could talk to the other person, what would they say? Okay. <laughs> I like I, uh, I like how you guys, I mean, I don't know if you heard my okay, <laughs> but it says, uh, I don't feel good enough for you and I need to protect myself. This person totally self-sabotaged, obviously. Like, they didn't feel good enough. They, they, like, protected themselves by running first, that kind of deal. But it hurts to be without you, so now they're upset. So, I mean, it could be that you guys, you too, not this person, but you and this person are in a really great relationship space. Like, maybe you are really healthy. But, um, but this person cannot let go of the fact that they... They could have um, gone with someone else. Could have gone with someone else and um, now they're unsure of where that would have taken them. And so having a hard time committing to you without like exploring all options. I think they want to commit to you so badly, but it's like they didn't get to explore this other side. So now they're wondering like if the best love is here or whether it's something that they gave up. Um, let's see, I feel like, okay, we're going to do some of these cards. These are like self-help cards. I use them for the therapy subscription, which is basically we work together to focus on two-year growth goals. In each month, we do a personalized spread for you that targets those and um, include I include astrological transits and then I include this section, which is like the growth section. It's gives you a journal prompt, an affirmation, and a, um, an action to do for the next month ahead. And surprisingly, these cards are so accurate all the time. So I wonder what they would say to you. Like, what are you missing right now? Like, what, like, what has this done to you? And maybe, and maybe we'll, we'll, I guess we'll talk about what to do next, but like, what has this done to you and how can we heal? Basically, the damage that's been done. How can we heal that? We already have one, but I'm going to pull one more. Okay, well, 
We have two action cards and they kind of are similar. We have sweat and we have stretch. So go to the gym or <laughs> do something at home. But I'm going to read both of them. Basically, this tells you an actionable thing to take on to help you release whatever this is, this anxiety. So sweating is one of the most beneficial practices for all the body's functions. In a world overridden with toxins, sweating is vital for detoxification and overall health. What is an invigorating and enjoyable way of allowing my body to sweat? Today I will move until I sweat. Try an infrared sauna, a hot bath, or even a cycle class. So sweat doesn't necessarily have to mean exercise if you're not really a, um, an active person. Stretch. The definition of stretch is be made or be capable of being made longer or wider without tearing or breaking. By engaging the muscles actively, I expand what is possible in my body. What part of my body have I neglected and is longing for expansion and connection? Today, I will spend 10 minutes consciously stretching and moving three parts of my body. Try cat-cow stretching. So I love that because stretch, like sweating out toxins can feel really great. I mean, it gives you endorphins, but stretching can also release pressure. We, have, we hold pressure in our body, so it can actively release this anxiety. Um, just want to make sure I haven't, don't have anything else left to say about this until we move on. Okay, so I have these astrological diet. They're going to tell us, they're going to give us some advice on what you should do next. Like, okay, what, how do we go about moving forward? Like, what's next for me? Okay, we have... Uranus. Sorry, I was like, I was thinking about, I was thinking about all these cards at the same time. Um, Uranus in the seventh house in Leo. So abrupt surprises in the seventh house of relationships, long-term relationships in Leo of selfishness and ego. I think that whatever is happening here, it's going to be revealed very soon. Like it's going to be brought up or brought to light um, within days, maybe a week. So <laughs> I think uh, that it's very close to coming forward and that you don't have to worry about it anymore. Perhaps even if you just brought it up, if you think you have an idea of what this could be about, like who this person is, um, or if you open the door to have them talk about it, they might actually tell you today. Well, maybe not today. Maybe they don't even know, but <laughs> but definitely very soon. Like within, the, I feel like within the next week, if you wanted to try that, you should see what happens. You know, uh, but definitely stop beating yourself up over this. That's for sure. This is not about you. Okay, Group Three. Thank you so much for joining, and I hope to read for you next time.